Good morning, dreamers. How are you today? Some days you just need the coffee, I'm telling you. Oh, and some days you just need to wake up. <laughs> I'm so grateful for the waking up today. Um, it's a good thing. It's such a good thing. I was studying in the book of Job. A lot of people know the book of Job. And it's where things that shouldn't happen, happen to the, the least qualified. Pain comes to the most faithful person. And it was interesting because before Job loses things, God's up in what Tim Mackey calls, it seems like it's a heavenly control center. And he's there with some angels, right? And one of them is called the opposer. And he has a title and he's called the Satan or the Satan. And it's not necessarily the Lucifer that we find in the Garden of Eden story. It's just an opposer. And sometimes it's okay to question because he questioned God and he said, hey, God, he has everything because you, you know, he, he's faithful to you because he has everything. And he was directly contradicting, um, pray it into fruition type of thinking. Like, if I do this, then God will reward with this. Now, there's something to be said for very positive thoughts and for thinking ahead. I have a friend who just got, um, they don't even call it a cottage. It's quite a nice property. Um, up in Kincardine and it's just a beautiful property and she has spent years working towards this and imagining herself sitting on a deck somewhere near the water right so she has envisioned this in her mind but she's also worked towards a goal and so when we have a goal we can work towards it and envision it at the same time it doesn't mean check off all these spiritual boxes and God will reward a specific kind of behavior. Um, in Christian circles, we call it um, prosperity gospel, right? If we're, if we're faithful enough, we'll be healed. If we're faithful enough, we'll get riches. If we're faithful enough. And the whole story of Job is that, hey, you, you don't see big picture the way I do. And when Job is so exhausted and so weary and says, God, come show yourself. Because faithful people, it doesn't mean they don't ever get frustrated. It doesn't mean they don't ever doubt. It doesn't mean they don't experience real life and they're in some mental health, horrible place of constantly um wishing away the bad and so I'm just gonna ignore it and shove it down here and not admit that I have even had trauma. I've lived there far too long, I must say. But it means that when we struggle, when we worry, when we doubt, when we lose the song in our heart, we can go to the author of creation God's big enough to handle our crap. <laughs> and I love that about Job. He says, Job, I'm going to come and I'm going to talk to you. And I might not answer the way you want me to answer, dude. I might not. In fact, I'm going to take you on a ride. And I'm going to show you my view. A bird's eye view of what's actually going on. And you're going to see the amazing creation that I've given you. And I'm going to show you the behemoth and the leviathan. And I'm gonna show you that they're not worth being afraid of even though they're extremely dangerous creatures. And there's a lot of danger, excuse me, hick up. Oh, I hope that doesn't keep happening all morning. Not just here, but everywhere. Um, but I'm, there's a lot of things that can seem dangerous in this world. 
Stranger danger is what we teach our kids from the very beginning. We coach our kids with fear. And God says, hey, I'm not here to cause you fear. In the New Testament, God says, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, a timidity, but a spirit of self-control and a sound mind. Courageous. Courageous spirit comes with that. And you see, God will never, ever, 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 ever have his work done by those without courage. For you see, when you take that first step towards courage, the thing that disappears is the fear that is there naturally. But it's hard to take that first step. Job never really got an answer. He didn't get a sneak peek into the heavenly realm where God was talking to the angel with a title. And I think that's also something worth looking at. The angel with a title was not someone to fear either because he was just asking questions. And questions should not be feared. Questions in and of themselves are not evil. Sometimes the answers can bring pain, but it doesn't mean the questions in and of themselves were evil. And to ask God a question, to oppose something, to say, hey God, can you teach me please? Because that's not in line with what I thought. I was talking with a friend yesterday and I said, you know, when I'm faced with a theology that uh, goes against what I was taught or I, I understood in the environment that I, whether it was a direct teaching or whether it was just something I gathered from the environment in which I was raised, I pray about that theology and I say, hey, God, one thing I know is that you're here. And I don't know what's going on with this theology because I don't get it. I don't get it. And if something needs to change, change it. I used to constantly pray, change him, change her, change them. But when we pray, the one who has changed is right here. Right here. So I challenge you today, if there's a, if there's a frustrating situation, if there's a coffee that's burnt, or you got it through a drive through and it's not quite right, please understand that's a metaphor for a... Uh, problem you're facing because it's not a real problem it was an error and deal with it sorry that's an aside from my Tim Hortons days <laughs> but if there's something you're facing today and you don't get it cry out to God he's big enough to handle it he's big enough to handle it and he might not answer you the way you want but he will answer and as my teenagers are learning no is still an answer, even if they don't like it. So trust that God will answer, that he is there, and he sees the big picture, and he's not afraid of questions because he's been dealing with questions from the angel with the title for a very, very long time. And he can handle it because he's God Almighty, and he wants you to have a great day. I know he does. So do I. I'm not God, but I still want that too. So have a great day and have some sweet dreams. Bye. There we go.